some residential students had a very special roommate at the beginning of this year. And you'll find out who next on WMLT News. Welcome to WMLT News. I'm Arden Hamrick. And I'm Gabrielle Scabetta. Dr. Gregory Aloya is entering his first semester as the new president of Concord University. And as students living on campus came to find out, their new president is willing to go out of his way to understand the student lifestyle. Arden Hamrick has more. Students moving into Waddell Hall this fall didn't realize that they were moving in with Concord's new president. Yeah, I've been living in dorms since Saturday. It's been a great experience. Uh, we have some very bright young freshmen coming to this university. I've had a chance to meet them, and we've had some uh, very interesting conversations. I've um, lived in the uh, residence hall and um, I eat in the cafeteria, and believe it or not, the food's good. I asked some students what they thought about Aloya living in the dorms. I thought it was really cool because that's like the first president of a, a university I've ever heard doing that, and it's really awesome that he just took the time to see how, what we were going through. I mean, he wasn't up in his mansion or at his house, you know, we're all down in the basement. That was really cool of him. I think it's interesting. I mean, it's never been done before, probably, so. I thought that uh, Dr. Aloya staying in the dorms was pretty cool. Like, he took his time out to go chill with everybody and uh, just relax and be cool because he's, he's a real chill guy. Like him. Thanks to Dr. Aloya's experiences in the dorms, we'll probably see some great changes here on campus. One of the, one of the the outcomes of staying in the residence hall was the goal of raising some funds to renovate the lounges. And um, what we're, we're doing is we've asked people to sponsor me for a dollar an hour. Seven days, it's 168 hours in seven days. And uh, sponsor the president for a buck an hour and any of the funds that we raise, we'll use it to renovate the, the, the residence halls. And we've had a really good positive response to that. And hopefully we'll get enough money to do one, maybe two residence hall lounges. And uh, I jokingly said if we raised enough to do them all, I would I'd get a tattoo. Arden Hamrick, WMLT News, Athens. Students living on campus at Concord have returned to more cramped conditions than normal. Overbooking of dorms led to the need to house students in unusual conditions. Josh Kerbway takes a look at how the administration is helping to accommodate these students. For most students, college is full of adjustments, meeting new people, scheduling classes, but especially life in the dorms. With admission jumps over the past three years, some students are finding new living situations. And the downside is, when you have an occurrence like this, you just don't go out and get a hotel floor. There isn't any. I mean, the closest hotel is eight miles away. Uh, so you, you have to play in the reality that you have. This reality has left students living in basements, lounges, and even kitchens. We're attempting to uh, fit those in in the most appropriate way in, in, in the housing. Although these students have different arrangements, most students are not upset. Uh, I feel like we should have our own room because of privacy, but uh, besides that, sorry. The administration has taken time to make these students feel more at home. I had to buy beds, additional beds, bed frames, mattresses, um, wardrobes, desks, desk chairs, um, dressers, um, internet ports. Although these students do not have traditional living arrangements, these students have made Concord their new home. Josh Kerbway, WMLT News, Athens. The overbooking has not only caused problems in the dorm rooms, but in the parking lots as well. With the lots full of vehicles, the students are driving circles around Concord to find a space. The university police have been on patrol to make sure the students are parking safely. The police urge everyone to keep their parking passes and to park in des designated areas only. The passes cost $15 and for many students it's included in their tuition and fees. The Campus Beautiful is undergoing a little facelift. University Point, featuring the Wilkes Family Interfaith Chapel and Museum, is under construction. During the 1930s, Concord President J. Franklin Marsh Senior set the goal of establishing an interfaith chapel on Concord's campus. But it was merely a dream until recently. The project began picking up momentum in 2003 with several grants, bequests, and donations. 
An alumni center will also be incorporated into the structure to facilitate stronger relations within the university's 14,000 alumni and friends. Brian Honor the project next week. The Concord Science Building was closed all of last semester due to cleanup efforts after the discovery of mercury. I had the chance to find out more about the reopening this semester. I remember the mercury spill that happened in the science building. The science wing was locked down and classes were relocated to the Ray Hall building. We asked the chair of the Division of Natural Sciences, Joe Allen, how this move inconvenienced them. Well, it was inconvenient for, for all of the science courses and, and many of the math courses too, but primarily the sciences because we didn't have our, our labs open to teach classes. The business department was set to move into the Ray Hall building, but they had to put their plans on hold when the science department moved in. They, for example, had ordered uh, new computers already before we moved in that were ready to go to Ray Hall and they're probably just now unpacking those those new computers. And This semester students not only enjoyed the reopening of the science building but also the new lab and technology features found inside. The installers have now put in uh, the new cabinetry which you can see in this room and our electricians and uh, uh, plumbers now have to go to work to, to get us some electricity restored and some plumbing restored and uh, hopefully these will be opening pretty soon. We asked some Concord students how they felt about the events that happened after the mercury spill in the science building last semester. I'm actually kind of worried about that going back in there because I know they just finished cleaning up not too long ago after that the mercury spill whatever they had. <laughs> the Ray Hall building is so much nicer and has all the new technology and it's air conditioned. This is Gabrielle Scabetto with WMLT in Athens, West Virginia. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at a CU sports program that is back in action after a six-year break. And take a look at a new yet familiar addition to Concord's communication department. Welcome back to WMLT on PBS. It's that time of year again, back to school. Those three small words can evoke happiness, anxiousness, fear, and loathing into even the most diligent students. WMLT went out and asked a few students what back to school means to them. Um, the thing I look forward to most about coming back to school is seeing all my friends. I look forward to not having to have a full-time job and being able to chill in between my classes. Being back at school just means that I'm going to be able to hang out with my friends and get to know new people and that's something that's really important because the social life is excellent. Every new year brings fresh faces to Concord University, but one new professor is no stranger to the campus. Brian Arnold has more. You've probably seen her on the news, but now Jessica Lilly has stepped off the TV screen and into the classroom. Former WVNS reporter and Concord alumnus Jessica Lilly is Concord University's newest professor. And Lilly says she's glad to be back at her alma mater. To actually come back and, and share my knowledge with the students here and help to, um, I guess, keep the legacy going and um, the tradition going of the quality education that so many students have gotten here or received here um, is really an honor. Lily isn't the only one excited. Her students are enjoying the real-world broadcast experience she brings to her lectures. Well, it's good to have someone that's been in the field and done this for a while and uh, knows what she's doing. Lily's duties extend beyond just the classroom. In addition to being a professor here, she is Southern West Virginia's chief bureau reporter for PBS, a position based out of her Concord office. It's an exciting time, I think, not only for myself, but for Concord as well, in bringing a whole new bureau to Southern West Virginia and you know, it could have came to another institution and I could have been based somewhere else in southern West Virginia, but they chose to come here at Concord to Concord University. Lily hopes her dual roles on campus as a journalist and as a professor will help her students get a taste of the real world. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Jessica Lilly in Athens. And for WMLT, I'm Brian Arnold. For students wanting to get in shape, hitting the gym just got easier. 
A new workout facility in North Towers opened this semester with a staff that is willing to help and plenty of new equipment for students to play with. This new facility provides students living on and off campus with a new environment for physical activity. If there's a few of the students that work in there that actually have some experience working in fitness centers, so they're glad to help. Right now it's only open to students and faculty and staff. We have six treadmills, six elliptical machines, four bikes, and then we have a, uh, diff a lot of different um, machines for different body areas. Um, but you have to make sure you have a valid ID if you're a student and want to come in. But anytime somebody has a question, if they're in there, if uh, the worker can't answer it, by all means, you know, have them contact me or one of the other workers. We'd be happy to help them out. The, the decision was this past January to rekindle a men's soccer program that was cut in 2002 due to budgetary concerns. Coach Steve Barrett managed to field a team of 24 players in only eight months and is happy to have the chance to lead this young team. Sean Miser has more. For the first time in six years, Concord University has a men's soccer program. Head coach Steve Baird, who saw the men's program cut for budgetary reasons two years into his tenure at Concord, is excited to have the program up and running. A lot of uh, men and boys out there want to play soccer at the college level. The funding was there, which is important. We're not going to just uh, do it without the money and the resources to have a competitive program. So I think the administration felt this was a good opportunity to do it. The team started the season 2-4, and four, but did take nationally ranked Davis and Elkins into overtime before losing one to nothing. Not bad for a team that didn't have a player on the roster as recently as January. We played some very good uh, programs, so it's, uh, you know, we've lost some games, but it's not against some shabby teams. Um, we've got a couple of wins, great win against uh, Bluefield College, and these programs that we've played against have all been established. Got to keep it in perspective that uh, this is a new beginning for us. With 13 freshmen on a roster of 24, this Mountain Lion team is still a work in progress. Coach Barrett highlights what the team needs to improve. Getting the ball to our forwards, we can't just whack it up there and hope our forwards are going to run onto it. It's, uh, you know, we've got to actually build an attack up and we're struggling to do that a bit right now. So hopefully in the next week or so here before EB we can uh, crack it a bit and get better with that and uh, get some goal scoring opportunities which we've lacked a little bit. With such a young team, leadership is important. Junior captain Joseph Parks is willing to provide just that. Just basically trying to show them what it is, what it's like to be in a college program. You know, show a little bit more maturity, lead by example. The Mountain Lions are coming off a 4 to nothing win over Salem International and have a long break between games before facing off with WVIAC foe Alder Sombratis on September 24th. With WMLT News, I'm Sean Miser. Coach Barrett had a really good run with the girls' soccer team last year. Hopefully he has a good run with the, girl, the men's soccer team this year. Well, I'm sure he will. He has a whole lot of experience especially in the WVIAC. Well, that's all we have for today. Tune in in two weeks for more WMLT. For Gabrielle Scabetta and the rest of WMLT, I'm Arden Hamrick.